Oh, don't record me. I'm gonna, since I'm not there, you want to go ahead and run the show? Okay. All right. So we don't usually go over communications. We just start with um, res resolutions, right? Pretty much. Yep. Okay. So accepting some the financial reports. I don't think any of these are That's an issue as regular. Acknowledgement of transfer budget by manager uh, 263 adjustment to highway fund. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where's that? I have no questions. What was the 30,000 for? That goes to the it's just 5130 line, it's our repair line for equipment. Changes. So we're over budget now, oh, okay? And just everything in general. Well, I mean, yeah, unexpected repairs and a couple of trucks that took more than usual on that line and we're just over budget. So you can just scroll. I just I'm sharing the screen so Jared can also see the agenda. Yeah, thank you. So just I've got paper in front of me too, so we're good. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I when I texted you, I, I was looking like why I, why isn't it clicking? And then I'm <laughs> clicking on December. <laughs> I was a month ahead. I'm sorry, Jared. I was looking at the September LDC meeting agenda, so we're on the same page. So. Good. We're right on top of things right now. <laughs> You're on the wrong page. So, <laughs> so the next procedurally, can I ask a question? Yes. Relative to this particular resolution, which we're looking at number 263, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So the highway department has a budget that is approved at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And it appears to me that you have one pot of money, capital equipment, that um, has money in it. And then you have another one that is machinery and contractual. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're shifting one money from that particular budget item to another budget item. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we, as the board, have to approve every every Transfer. modification to the line item budget because you're adjusting the budget so yes any budget any modifications to the budget have to be approved by the town board even though the bottom line is still the same correct mm -hmm. correct yes and that's a requirement yes. of the state yes that's yeah. one of the major responsibilities of the board is to, with the fiscal oversight is monitoring those and then approving those yes okay we got to make sure jim's not building his own personal sewer in the backyard right. the money yes. but we're not actually <laughs> looking into what's going into that 30 grand we're only saying yes you can shift it from one line item to another line item right so, okay thank but you for that we use finance committee to ask you know if there's something like what you know that, which is you, why he was just what, explaining that you know what happened was is one of the older trucks had a significant engine repair so that's more money yeah. than we anticipated. Right. So we'll just move money. I'm just putting enough money in there to get us through yeah. end of the year. Yeah. And I understand yeah. that. I just I just wanted to understand. So we have to approve right. line item adjustments. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah. Now the town board has passed a resolution that allows me to do it in between meetings. Um, as long as it doesn't exceed 5,000, but you still have to approve those and acknowledge mm -hmm. those. Those are those first two resolutions yes. yeah. because yeah. it's yeah. still. Yeah, John, that's every month that we see those and those are the the ones that are just done and we just approve them after the fact. Yep. Understood. Thank you. Does Jim have something that's a five thousand dollar as well? No. Or would that be helpful? Well, I didn't speak with Doug about it. Say, yeah. Doug, could we just move a few thousand? Okay. This one and then Doug will have that in his agenda. Okay. I'm sorry, in a resolution for the town board to have okay. the agenda to approve. Okay, so you okay. do it that way. Got yeah. it. But heading over that, then I yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do something like this, or okay. everybody does. Yep. Yeah. Not just me. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so no other questions. So 264 is authorizing highway fund reimbursement for services, and this was at the Kramer Road. Yeah, this is uh, this was the labor that we occurred. For repairing a water main break, the highway did for your labor in um, equipment. Sorry, so let's go get reimbursed to uh, one of the lines. I apologize, I don't know which one's going to um, it'll go back it into up. highway to reimburse. Oh, late, it'll go back to the labor line. I'm sorry, yeah. and yes. then it'll also go back to just um, so 5130 for the uh, uh, 
fuel line or not fuel line uh, maintenance line for repairs. Okay. Uh, so no. John, what we're doing here is I'm renting equipment and I'm leasing the water department labor. I keep track of it and then I reimburse the highway from the water department for projects. And we do that with all of our departments. Actually, I'll wait. There's another resolution where there's going to be an opportunity for a highway to get more money because of some stuff they're doing with parks. But right. we, we try to make it mm -hmm. as much as possible. We extend the dollar as much as possible. Right. So 265 is authorizing candidate with consolidated water district fund budget adjustments. Again, this is another area of where I'm going to be short on fixing the water system and purchasing water. Uh, we sold more water in the third quarter, and I'm anticipating a fourth quarter because it's been dry up to a few weeks ago. Water consumption has been above normal. I don't feel we have enough money in that line to pay for the fourth quarter bill. So is the city allowed to raise their price? You do it once a year, and we'll do it uh, next year. I mean, they can't raise it during the year? They typically don't, okay, unless there's some real major reason to do so. Okay. They typically, well, I I can't speak for the new contract that I know Doug has been discussing with John Goodwin. It, but just they, for everybody knows that, that hasn't even started yet. There is no um, new agreement. The current agreement expires December 31st and that's, I think it's supposed to be the purpose of this meeting next week, supposedly that John's calling to start those discussions for our talk about it. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. A lot of times the rate is based off of year past. So it's not this like based on well it's a formula, right? It's based on the water usage and how wet the season was. Mm -hmm. And there's a it's goofy. It's goofy. <laughs> it's never a mm -hmm. I'll say somewhat consistent rate. It could go up or down 20%. And the only Place they draw water is on West Lake Road. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, for our system. For us. Or we drive or us. whichever. This resolution, though, also relates to the closing of that capital project and the moving of that 150000 from that capital project back into some of these other lines and everything, just so everybody knows. The closing of the big tank water booster project, capital project. Number 266, authorizing town manager to close the cybersecurity capital project. Yeah, this one is, uh, we've been, for a couple of years, we had a grant uh, to do a um, cybersecurity grant that uh, really um, Sarah worked on and, and Kate did a lot of work on this also. And there was money that we received from that grant. We didn't get everything we had originally submitted for. Um, but, you know, we did get some to help with some of the improvements that we've need to make to our technology side. So we're done with that and closing that out and moving on and making the state for the money. Very not anticipating future cybersecurity upgrades. Yes, but not for that grant. So that was specific to the grant? The grant, yeah. Okay. We'll close that grant out. Yeah. 267 is signing authorized project groups for the use of ARPA funds. Yes, so this is the ARPA funds that we've been talking about for quite a while now. This is the $1.1 million. It allocates the 750000 just so it's all spelled out, <clears throat> of this capital project. This is specifically for this capital project, H33, 750 for investments in water sewer infrastructure, which we know is the County Road 28 project, right? Mm -hmm. And 409000 for the general category that's identified in the ARPA choices to respond to public health emergency its negative economic impacts, which includes the healthy communities and that sort of stuff, that other 400,000. That's exactly what I was talking about, about mm -hmm. where there's an opportunity like we could use, and that's still to be decided the exact of that, right? But for instance, if the board chose to use some of that money for <clears> those improvements that we've talked about at Onanda, that we could then highway will send parks a bill for that and then we'll shift that money back over to park uh to highway i'm sorry so it's almost like we're getting double we're getting two dollars instead of one dollar for each dollar 
However, the specifics of this 409 mm -hmm. have not been determined. Is Correct. Right Correct. Okay. Correct. And then we come back in a resolution somewhere when you do it. Right. Whenever the board wants yeah, to. Yeah, that's where we have to, we, we initially mentioned, Ananda, there are a couple other things, projects that we could look at, but um, yeah. that's just to get it closed right. up so we don't get in trouble for not having it allocated um, in time. There is also um, the ARPA qualifies for what they call CWSRF um, expenses, which does also include stormwater. So I know Jim's got like a Seneca Point Road stormwater thing that needs to be done. So that's where the board needs to have some additional conversation at some point about the specifics of these dollar figures. But it would still be the same 1.1 million out of the same capital project. Question: um, If we start passing the petition around for County Road 28 and they decide not to move forward with it. Um, what do we do then about? Well, that's the nice thing about just leaving it broad because you can still use it for yeah. water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure projects. Okay, so just making sure that if that, I, I don't it anticipate doesn't that happening, in, but, but it know. could, so. Yeah. If who decides not to move forward? We have, in order to have the County Road 28 sewer go forward, they yeah. have to pass a petition. And is it majority or yeah, majority? Yeah, the majority petition to who? The to residents. The residents in yeah. that district People because they're be charged money for obviously being part Just like so. what we proposed for Cheshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah correct. Okay. Number 268, unpaid water sewer bills for re -levy. 2023 town county tax. Rebecca, you want to explain this? No. Nope. Clerk's office. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the clerk's office gets notification from the county each year for people that essentially have not paid their water sewer bills, etc., and then relevying of those back through the property system, um, and then we have to charge those and message you authorize us to do that. The one thing I did make a change to this resolution versus what Gene had originally did. And you see, I put a note on there. I didn't really change the context of the resolution. Yeah. We consolidated the Andrews and North Road Water District into the Canandaigua Farmington District. So I think that's gonna have to be relevied through Canandaigua Farmington. But okay. you guys will just that's have to double we, check that. Yeah, that's what we, we saw the note and that's okay. the question we had. So that works okay. out perfect. Yeah. Will, we have to, will we have to amend this Monday night? I don't think we need to amend it because that's why I just put it as a note because it doesn't really it doesn't change. affect the bottom line. It Correct. just right. It's in a different area. Okay. So can I ask the um, the two large uh, thirty two thousand and seventy one thousand there are they related to businesses? Uh, residents. residents. All residents. Well, there's a so consolidated is a large area. Mm -hmm. It's most of. It's mostly residential, and there could be a potential of a, I don't know for sure if there's a business in there, we'd have to look into that, mm -hmm. but that's well, basically people throughout the year who chose not to pay their water bill. Is it typically that high? It's a little higher than normal. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I will say, I mean, I won't say grossly higher, but it is higher. Okay. Okay. So we've got people that don't pay their water bill, and what are the consequences? If the falls we get a penalty. They get a penalty. It's a ten percent penalty um, each quarter. So, like, if the There's January bill yeah. goes into April, they'll get a ten percent penalty on that January bill, and then the April bill they still don't pay. Then it's a ten percent penalty on that April bill. So this is a balance due from these particular or entities. Anything or that was not <clears throat> paid for by October thirty first. And then it goes on their tax. So it when they, it, tax it becomes part of their tax bill. So they still have to pay it, but they're paying it as part of their tax. The reason they do it is because then they write it off as a tax expense yeah. instead of a water expense, which yeah. isn't tax deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, people, oh, there are people who call and mm -hmm. ask for how much water they use because they're writing it off. Mm -hmm. So then the expectation is that somewhere down the road, we're going to get reimbursed we're going to get paid this money this so that's year. what this resolution does yeah. so when they yeah. levy the taxes in january when people get these people get their tax bill it'll also include a line for the water okay mm -hmm. thank the you county will make us whole the county pays the town mm -hmm. this amount of money to make us whole and the county collects it in taxes okay. does the county pay us <clears throat> ahead of time or as they collect the taxes ahead of time 
wait, 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 wait. We actually collect no. it. No. Yeah. Collect oh, it and so then we, we pay. <clears throat> yeah. So okay. Yeah. okay. There's Kate. It's deducted from what um, Jean owes to the county. Jean collects taxes for the town and the county. And then this amount is deducted from what she owes. So when we account for it, we fulfill the accrual of this relevy before we incur any revenue for the new year. So it's always, the town is always made whole. So when people start coming in and paying their tax bills, like in January, we technically don't pay that until what the end of March or April or whatever is when officially we have to make the, we pass all the money over to the county. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, number 269, authorizing CNB to act as agent for the town to accept town and county tax payments. That's the standard that's one. Just, yeah, that's normal. just yeah. people can go into the uh, CNB and pay there, and then CNB just sends us a check. That's right. Um, 270, approval of credit card payment contract for debit credit card payments for tax collection beginning January 1st. Is this a new company? This is a new company. So the Ontario County change from ITAX, which is what um, they've been doing, and the only way we can get our taxes online is through a new system, uh, System Express, East. Express uh, No, System East is the actual oh, yeah. um, company for the taxes mm -hmm. and the only one that the only online credit card payment that they accept is express pay so it's another one on top of the ones that we already have somebody's making money mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Don't a lot of residents that want to pay by credit cards so. yeah there are and and the <clears throat> continues to grow the processing fee is a little different so we will have to update the fee schedule Okay. Number 271, authorization for town manager to execute agreement for independent audit services for town court, town clerk, and regulatory audit of the town. So you may remember we released an RFP for our audit services. We did receive two responses, and then Jess did an analysis for us that's attached to this. Mm -hmm. um, but Fair Jess, way. you want to share what you thought about this? Um, so I did review both of the proposals. Um, I, you know, basically both companies have similar backgrounds, plenty of experience in large or small municipalities. Um, so in that respect, I think they're pretty equal. Um, the Lumsden McCormick um, quote was significantly less than the EFPR. Um, and, you know, um, you know, so that may be a better value for the county. Um, I did um, reach out to clarify a couple of things in regards to their proposal. Um, um, when I re when I was reading through the EFPR proposal, it says that their their rate was all inclusive of all these you know travel phone copies. Um, and I did reach out to Lumsden, and they said that they would charge us for travel. But uh, on their their opinion would be it would just be a few hundred dollars if they only came out you know a, a couple of times um, for on site review, um, so that wouldn't have a significant impact on what the total cost would be from them. Um, it looks like both of the companies um, are willing to do either uh, remote um, or on site or. Um, a combination of both a hybrid model um, depending on what our needs are um, and not being here before i'm not really sure how that we've done it before but um, i think a lot of places are going with a hybrid model now um, so that who did we use last year the deal so they decided that they no longer wanted to provide the service to the town um, it was it was not uh, financially worth their their time they felt like and uh, they had they had increased they had been doing the audit for quite some time and they were mm -hmm. they were great to work with and everything but i think um maybe their business model might be changed a little bit and they've also been having some challenges like a lot of places i think in terms of finding people and finding auditors to be able to you know really take on the number of clients so um 
you know, that was some of the factors, but they've worked very closely with Kate. I think, although last year, I think Kate trained their auditor while they were here. That's my <laughs> personal opinion, but I'll leave Eric. that all to the, to the side. But um, so the Lumsden McCormick proposal, I think, is 22500 for both the seventeen five for the town audit plus the 5000 you know, we may not need to put in an amount like not to exceed 25000 just to give us a little bit of buffer there with some sure. of the other stuff. But that's the direction we want to go. Right. Is it comparable to what Bondio had charged us in the past? Um, it is. You know, that's actually a great question. Adeline. Kate, do you remember it because it was ramped up? Do you remember what those numbers were? Yeah, it's more comparable to what Bonadio charged two years ago. Um, this uh, is actually less than the, what they charged us last year because they couldn't honor the pricing they had originally. We did a resolution to authorize them to do a little bit of additional services. So it ended up, um, I think it was like 22 or 23,000 total for the town, plus the um, 2,500 for each of the AUPs. So you're recommending only one year? As a conservative approach, <laughs> um, I, I, I've never worked with either one of these companies. Um, I would be concerned, you know, about being tied to a three year mm -hmm. term. Um, just to make sure that we don't end up being nickel and dimed for some reason. Well, I 100% agree with Jess. The other thing, change it to a new company, even though we do have some experience, experience working with EFPR. Let's try it for a year and see how it goes. And if can it's we can we do a year with an option for a second year? I mean, if it works well, then we're like right. we have an option for a second year at similar pricing. Yeah. Well, we can ask, yeah, mm -hmm. and see. Um, now, what the quest? So we're looking. So the um, McCormick, the the state, the big audit, we're about ten thousand less. The other one they have that lumped in the town justice and town clerk procedures report. I'm assuming that's $2,500 for each of those reports, or is that is they doing all for that? I actually reached out um, to to them, and they said that it was $2,500 for all of them, all three. Okay. So I do so have the justice court and the clerk. Yes. Which that was surprising to me. Yeah, because that's quite mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah, that's half. That's 50% less. And then if we need that other one, then we'd be at that five. So we're kind of. And, and that was another thought I had is that by, if, if we do choose to go with Lumsden, they, the quote they gave us was great, but you know, they may see that maybe the workload is more expansive than they anticipated. Um, and then we might fall into the same issue as we had with Bonadio where they're trying right. to renegotiate a contract that we already have in place so right. <coughs> all right are we going to recommend one of the other here today well we'll have to recommend them for the meeting i mean we'll have to have more discussion on monday but um we will be recommending one on monday okay <coughs> yes because i have to fill it in to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't want Rebecca mad at me and do it on the fly. <laughs> I just, you know, any, mini money, no. <laughs> so I, I personally, I was more, I felt more comfortable with, uh, you know, as far as the experience and the breadth of everything uh, with the uh, EFPR, but they do seem, there's not a huge difference in the two as far as municipal. They're, they both have municipal experience mm -hmm. and with you know with what we need uh and i agree with that price with the price difference you know they might come back and they might say you know we can't do it for this amount it's just not feasible but i'm willing to try the for a year. the yeah. travel yes that's true oh yeah it's rochester but they're not charging us mileage was included already. Mm -hmm. Right. Personally, I have some hesitations working with the FPR. Um, we've worked with them in the past, and I, I personally have some reservations with the services we've been provided in the past. There's no way to say whether it'll be the same or not going forward, but that's just my opinion. I remember we had issues with them. Mm -hmm. Kind of like four or five years ago. 
kind of like we're the small fish is that what it's like no it was it was extensive issues yeah. with them wanting to actually tell the town board um what they should be spending stuff on and everything else and and even the accounting and really getting way into the weeds and it created so much work um i can tell you both the justices and i've talked specifically with uh, justice Prowl. he does not support the use of efpr uh with the justices um he's willing to try the other one um but uh they they had a pretty bad experience with efpr well if we have a few people with reservations then i think that kind of helps us with our decision i mean people who are on the day-to-day -day, on the front lines dealing with the audit so i am inclined to support and respect those decisions and those feelings mm -hmm. so i can support going forward with lumsden for a year and try it for an option for a second year um if they would do that and if you give a not to exceed yeah. twenty five thousand, not to exceed twenty five thousand. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I do. Okay. Do we do we have to vote here? No, no, no. <laughs> that's, 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 no that's it. <laughs> no, save that for Monday. Come on, we got to oh, okay. do something on Monday, Karen. Okay, that's right. Yeah, something to do. <laughs> and if anybody has, you know, uh, a has looked through any of the material and they have questions that I, I'd be more than happy to reach out for okay. any clarification for you. So. Thank you for doing that and for everybody for your input on that because that's yeah. important background knowledge that not all of us have. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, are we on 272? Moving to planning to purchase a generator. You've talked about that in the past. Yeah, we have yeah. talked about that in the past. Yeah. So, you know, it's, um, I actually, right now, well, it says about 45,000 generators and like 28. There's a fair amount of rework we've done in the building because the old transfer switch doesn't work with the new transfer switch. You know, upsize the gas line, different concrete pad. So, it's once approved, it's not going to be for our six, seven months before it shows up. So, so I'd like to talk about this resolution for a second because there's a couple things with this resolution. We all know it's the generator and the generator place, and thankfully Jim is <clears throat> on top of all of that. Um, there's two things with the cost of forty six thousand. I think I don't see Kate just on the screen, but I think she's still here. Kate had brought up a procurement uh, related matter that we need to talk about, but. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not so sure we need this resolution at all uh, because resolution 22, 2022-247 was the authorization to create the capital projects for the upcoming multi-year construction projects that we did at the last town board meeting. And the third or second, be it further resolved, authorized us to move $75,000 over to the capital project for the generator and the very next be it further resolved, authorizes the town manager and the highway superintendent to execute purchase orders and procurement of a replacement generator in an amount not to exceed 75,000 and to be paid from HH 116.20.200.00037. So yeah, I we surely I don't even think we need this resolution, yeah. but Kate's issue where it comes up, we need to at least talk about Kate, you want to talk about what you were you and I talked about? Yeah, sure. Um, the state has a procurement policy where we're, if we're going to spend uh, $35,000 or more on a public works contract, which I would say this qualifies as, um, we're actually required to do the state public bidding process where we would release a public RFP and we would have a public opening and it would be advertised like we did for the, um, the audit where we'd have, we'd have it go out last a few weeks and then we'd get responses um generally when it's under thirty five thousand, we can request quotes but over that um it just to me this was kind of a, a red flag that um we're only collecting quotes we're not putting it out to the public to bid now isn't there a provision if it's an emergency situation for that um there is i think that'd be an uphill battle considering it's not something that's going to be installed as jim said for six to seven months 
Right, but I do think that the town board has the discretion to make that call, and that you know I know and maybe that, that's yeah yeah I think that you know that's you know we know we've had the conversation right that they the fire department has orders to drive through the door if the powers yeah. you know so at some point in time but we also I mean it's if we because we don't have a there's no pool bid you know kind of what. I don't have the right name for it, but automate, you know, how they're approved bidders, so we can just go to them for things. We don't have that, do we, for this? Well, we can bid it, that we could buy a generator off bid, then we get to buy find a vendor to install it. Right. So I think that this can, I mean, I, I'm comfortable justifying this as an emergency because if we if we go out to bid, we put out an RFP, we're two to three weeks, we're extending it a month maybe two months two months and then um i think we just get on it as quickly as we can knowing the situation i agree yeah we I'm should i'm and i'm comfortable with that and i'm comfortable fighting that battle and arguing that if that ever comes up i know it's concerned but i'm yeah, in the right. situation i'm okay with that it's not like it's something that we just want to do they need so it if that's the direction the board is going, what I, I think I might actually suggest to you is maybe to table the resolution indefinitely Monday night, because I really don't think the resolution is needed. But additionally, maybe you make that comment that you're considering this an emergency repair, so that's part of the record for us. That would be great. Yeah, yeah I, I'll make a note of that. You can't separate the generator and the work. I could, but be honest with you, I don't, I'm not an electrician. I don't know what right. no, size conduit wire yeah. you know to yeah. specify. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Without I'd have to we would have to ask MRB to go to their engineer to design and come up with a bid of what needs to be done. Yeah. Well, to give the correct information to go out. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay, under ordinance uh, 273, seeker determination for non significance and adoption of local law to amend town code chapter 220 33 incentive zoning. Yeah, if we could just spend a second talking about this. So, the, the ordinance itself is pretty straightforward. It's just allowing, and this is associated with the public hearing that's also on the agenda. It, it basically it's allowing the town board to utilize incentive zoning in any district in the town. I just want to talk with you for a second. The attachments um, attached to this resolution, or yet yeah, for this resolution, include the local law, include the red line version that we discussed. And for the life of me, I don't know why, but attached to this, at least my version, has something called Amanda's comments of 11922, which there's handwritten comments in there that are not part of the uh, public hearing that we have. Shauna told me that the planning board reviewed this and that the planning board is recommending, and I haven't seen that because I thought she was going to attach it to her report, but that the planning board is referring, and, and I'm assuming maybe this is Amanda from the planning board, adding a component relative to affordable housing in this. Um, the one thing, while I, while I understand maybe their desire to do that, the public hearing has already been set for the version that we have been reviewing. That's what's before you. Yeah. If they're going to make or you wish to make a change to the local law, I would actually recommend that you either just adopt what we've been talking about to get that part taken and maybe direct it back to the ordinance committee again for the other pieces because the planning board's proposal, from what I understand, relative to the housing, didn't change anything of the existing law. It was adding new stuff to it that we've never talked about before. Do you follow me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I would have a whole nother public hearing. Yes, it would need a whole new and all to that. Go move to amend it. Um, yeah, I'm not comfortable so. making that stuff on that right go now. Go ahead. You can yeah. right. do an amendment later on if you need it. Correct. You know, that's a question if it's needed. Right. Yeah, I we even need it because that's a whole another discussion. That's a bigger, much bigger discussion in itself. Right. Okay. So attached to the 
resolution is the actual original local law like you would normally have that adopt and then the red line version that is attached to that even though at least my version is not in yeah. color and i don't know Very why but it's, it's a little bit hard to read but d says the town board shall have the authority the new that words added the town board shall have the authority to designate incentives in all zoning districts of the town of Canada, and then it strikes the, all the specific ones out. And then it did add one additional or a couple of additional words relative to the cash payment in lieu of amenity under uh, section O. And this is exactly what had come from the ordinance committee that the ordinance committee had talked about, and that the uh, gives the town board the discretion to place those funds in the case of a cash payment in lieu of, a, of the amenity at the discretion of the town board, which also could be directed to reserve funds, capital projects, other funds or funds or projects to be created by the town board. So our original, our version that we talked about the ordinance committee and that I think we've previously discussed as well as what you previously saw and what the public hearing is based on is really designed to give the town board maximum flexibility. Are these written by the town attorney? No, I did these. You did. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, 274, seeker determination, nine significance and adoption of local law to amend town code chapter 220-33.1, scenic view shed overlay. This one is also a simple addition. This is also a public hearing that's on your agenda. All it does really is it adds a few words in the existing law that says the minimum lot size in the scenic view shed overlay district. And then it adds the words shall not be less than one acre of the minimum lot size of the underlying zoning district, whichever is greater. And the reason for that, like we talked about the ordinance committee is if you've got a, um, if you've got a parcel where they could potentially do uh, maybe an R130, for instance, we use that, that's less than an acre, and they're in the scenic view shed overlay, the scenic view shed overlay is designed so that it would be um, another, a little bit more restrictive and protective of that scenic view shed overlay, so it would prohibit them from doing that R130 subdivision, they would have to do it as a one acre if they're in that, so it's the whichever is greater part. It's adding there. Oh, economic development general resolution 275 authorizing town manager to execute an intermunicipal agreement with the county for law enforcement services. This is our annual enhanced law enforcement contract. This would be for 2023 for the extra enhanced services, uh, the, the trafficking, uh, the, the speeding, uh, specifically in the past, we've asked the county to focus on Middle Cheshire Road, County Road 16. I know that they've added uh, State Route 332, and then we get the monthly reports that are always attached to the agenda. You see what they've been doing associated with the ELE. You know, that's, that is something that if the town board would like the sheriff's department to designate other areas, or if we see problems, we can let them know and that they will do that. I have some questions living on Little Cheshire Road. <laughs> well, so um, it's pretty speedy commute zone in the morning, in the evening. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to at least get the speed you're traveling at? I have one ordered, and I have one coming one for this year. We have one budget for next year, and I also order that no one is going to take a good vacation. Um, and I'm curious, with the uh, officer reports on tickets written, there's nothing written on Middle Cheshire Road. Yeah, this month I see yeah. there's nothing at all there. Yeah. There are sometimes. There, there are sometimes. There are sometimes. sometimes. They move there are sometimes. Yeah. Um, I kind of focused on Butler to Wifels. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of population. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem we'll find out there is there's not a good location for him mm -hmm. or her to park. Come yeah. in my driveway. Well, <laughs> Please. we might have to offer that. To I you. will. Okay. I will. I'll talk to them. Um, there are there is a spot north of Butler on the west side where we have a water vault they can sit at, mm -hmm. which they've done before. But I think 
that m may be a constraint for them to consider mm -hmm. and knowing that you're willing to offer is a, is a good suggestion so if you have a number anybody specific um we do we can no it's got, we will need to funnel it through the ele so okay. you mean in terms of making the offer so actually what would be great is if you could send us an email offering that and then we can jared and i can forward okay. it over to the contact that we use for that so yeah. um north road maybe have they thought about north road i yeah. know that particularly up near the school it's a little problematic mm -hmm. um yeah, so the thing about North Road, help me, Jim, I've seen them sitting in the church parking lot before, but I also know part of it is actually done by the city police, right? Yeah. Yes. So a, that's yeah. it. I think the city goes all the way to the high school. The city would go all the way to the high school and the, the, yeah. past the parking lot up there by the stadium. Mm -hmm. I've had some people complain, actually, the area between East Street and and. Andrews, is it? Andrews? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, Jared last year tried to get the speed reduced, but yeah. I got denied. I know. So. so we have five years and we'll do it again. Yep. Yeah. Is it, oh, it's a uh, county road. That's right. So you'd have to go through the county for that reduction? Any, go no, the any, uh, we have a population of less than 50,000. So in order for a town or a, um, a town or the county to change your speed limit, you have to go through a uh, a TE9, the town board approves it. It goes to the county highway superintendent and then reviews it. And then it goes up to Henrietta, the, D, the state troopers get a hold of it. And they, they do the six it. months later, they come back and say no. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got it. So. Yeah. All, right. Um, all right, the second one was uh, authorization to execute intermunicipal agreement with the county for court. Security. Yeah, that's our court security here for court nights. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? Where are they here? Oh, 277, authorizing town manager to execute agreement with the Humane Society. Or historical. historical, not humane. <laughs> that's <laughs> coming up. They got the humane, huh? <laughs> uh, this again, this is our annual. So um, we cannot, we're prohibited from gifting municipal resources and uh, there's there's a couple of these types of contracts we do each year the historical society mercy flight pine bank cemetery where we enter into a contractual arrangement with a one of our community partners where we are then giving them some money but they are also documenting what they're providing us in return and so specifically uh, that's documented here the agreement is uh, attached to your agenda attachment number 12 but working with our history team, our history committee, um, offering exhibits, writing articles for the newsletter, the, they're assisting and volunteering with the history team, attendance at those meetings, they work with the Parks Department to create uh, remote exhibit space at Onanda Park, that's one of the initiatives for 23, really displaying some of the historical stuff in our parks buildings at Onanda, and then uh, willing to uh, uh, participate with uh, some other smaller type projects and stuff throughout the year. So that's detailed there in that, in that agreement. Is the agreement. intention to pay this in 2023 or yes. 2022? Yeah, 23. It's definitely at 23. Okay. It's kind of a little bit weird that it's on this agenda. Yeah. To be honest, but, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could say like from the 2023 adopted budget line, AA 174.50. That's not a bad idea. Just to clarify. We, just, just to clarify. Just to add it on. Yeah. Just amend that tomorrow on uh, Monday. Yeah. Yep. Actually, you could just add it right at the very end of the last sentence after the budget number, like Kate was saying, and just add uh, in the 2023 budget. Uh, number 278, acceptance and support of final site plan associated with CPN. Uh, 22-062 Edgemere Development at Parkside Drive. This resolution is for the project that you're familiar with, Edgemere Development, and we've talked about in the past, but the resolution itself confuses me. Can you tell I'm just coming back from vacation? I never really got a chance to go through the resolutions before. I, I think we need to completely rewrite this resolution before Monday night is my personal opinion, because this resolution says you're approving a site plan 
There's no site plan attached to this resolution. And previously you reviewed a sketch plan, not yeah. a site plan. So I think this resolution needs work. So um, why do we lay it over? Uh, well, or I'll try to work with Shauna tomorrow and bring you to you guys the want to bring up an amended resolution 78A that's amended. I think as long as we're saying that you're approving the sketch plan, because that's what you previously reviewed. That's what you referred to the planning board. That's what the planning board said yes about. It may be as simple as changing all the words site to sketch. It may be that simple, but I need to talk to her. Um, but I don't think you should approve a site plan. No, right. And I also don't see a seeker in here and a whole variety of other things. So you don't necessarily need that with sketch, but you do with site. So that's why I need to ask some questions on that one. Okay. All right, number 279, directing town manager to draft the local law to amend the official zoning plan. Tag not it. <laughs> so <laughs> this, um, you will remember, we had received a mixed use overlay rezoning application for Uptown Point LLC, and that is actually attached, including the sketch, to rezone that portion of the property. We're talking generally about a piece of property off of Airport Road in the area of Brickyard and um, and. Um, Thomas, but it's south of Thomas, more inland, but yes, thank you. And so the application was made at the your last um, action relative to the mixed use overlay rezoning request was you referred it to the planning board for an advisory opinion. And the planning board is now sending you back their opinion, which may not 100% support the rezoning application. So that's why we put this on the agenda in the manner that we did, because there's been no local law yet to draft it to rezone the property, which is what would be needed. And so that way I thought, if you want to move forward with that, you could direct me to draft the local law. If you don't want to move forward with it, don't draft me, have me draft the local law and it's not going to get rezoned, but so that at least you could start to have those conversations without pinpointing you specifically. So. But you guys need to have some conversations probably on Monday night about whether or not right. you support the concept of rezoning this property from industrial to mixed use overlay for residential purposes. Yeah. Two, two questions I have. Um, is this for the four to six lots that are being proposed to become industrially used as the storage buildings or whatever, or is this the larger parcel that um, the, the owner is discussing making uh, residential? Um, kind of neither. And that's where it gets super confusing. In your attachments, um, it's it, there's a little map of 14, but it's not the four parcels, the industrial parcels. It's a piece of the property behind those four lots that comes in off of airport road that is currently zoned industrial closer to the school bus garage, but not the parcel that goes all the way up and touches Thomas road. I probably really may be confusing. I'm sorry, but it's how big of a parcel is this? Is it this stuff? Yes. This yeah. It's in there. Is your two things contagious? No, my two things is not contagious. So this is not that big U shaped one over there. That's the parcel, right? That's a uh, yeah, that is the parcel, parcel, but that's a section. Of so they're doing a subdivision? Yeah. They want a subdivision? So you, you can see here, and this is where this would have been helpful to have like Encore or something or other up mm -hmm. to, but it's. Uh, He's proposing to rezone on the, the very next page is the analysis with the zoning law determination, essentially. Rezone 2435 Brickyard Road from industrial to mixed use overlay. A build out two phase residential, phase one at five lots and phase two at nine, 19 lots. Um, but essentially what has been proposed to this point is a, a very, very basic rudimentary sketch plan. How many? Five and 19? Correct. So I think he's only showing us 19 on this sketch. 
Oh, those are the five. The, yeah. the, so those are, they do include those five yeah. lots then yeah. that he um, wants to put storage buildings on. I, those aren't the storage building ones, I don't think. I think the storage building ones are separate from those. Okay, different. Yes. Location. These are homes. Those are all yes, homes. those are all single. These are all single family homes. All right, so he's got five single family homes there, and then he's got these other nineteen mm -hmm. structures. Okay. Wait, I want to be careful about the use of the word single family homes. Um, well, my second question is, which I'll ask where you're looking, is this conversation that has to be public or is this conversation that can be dealt with in executive session? That will need to be public. There's nothing. That would be allowed under executive session that this will have to be a public conversation. It has to be a public conversation. Yes. I'm asking just for my selfish reasons about whether I can participate in it or not. And all I could the only oh. way I could participate in it. No, you could you can privilege be on the floor. No, no, you could be invited. No, I can invite you to, to share your comments as a board member elect. Okay. So if you would like to speak, just wink and wave. <laughs> well, in the determination, you know, the last part of the justification from the applicant, that there are a series of questions were asked by staff, Tom staff, that had not been answered and I guess the bottom line is that the justification to make this change is questionable but there's not enough data to support it when I think that to read through the whole wait, thing. You, unfortunately this is one of the ones where you're really going to have to spend some time reading through the documentation including the planning board's comments because like even in the planning board's determination, I know there's a reference to it in there about it being a very basic concept plan and really not having a lot of detail for them to make a great decision on. So the planning board is looking for more detailed drawings. The planning board in their determination references the need for a site plan, which would essentially be the answer to your question. I'm going to not speaking for the planning board, but I'm going to say yes. A more detailed drawing with site plans would help everybody understand more about what the applicant's trying to do. Do we know if this road is going somewhere? This is just some sort of well, he and, and again, this is what's challenging about this because years ago we had a overall concept where that road did cross over and connect all the way out to Thomas to Road. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it just kind of gets lighter. <laughs> so, so to your point, though, Adeline, and I think that's a good question. So if we don't approve this resolution, can we disapprove it with comments? Oh, sure. There could always be comments and, sure. and either vote no, or you could even just table the resolution pending additional More information ways. being submitted. That is kind of my question about the note. So we could go back and be in harmony with the planning department mm -hmm. and say, for before we could really give this consideration, due consideration, we would like mm -hmm. a site plan as referenced by the planning board. Mm -hmm. But I think at this point, it would be helpful for the town board <clears throat> to give that direction so that we can be clear we're all on the same page and tell the applicant, hey, we need a lot more information before the town board can further just consider this. And that would be helpful for the applicant as well. Yes. To understand mm -hmm. that we're not just saying no, we're saying no, right. we want this. Right. And those, that, those concerns can be part of our discussion as well, because yep. those will come up during the discussion and then it can be summarized pretty succinctly at the end. That information is kind of uh, more of an objective nature. Yeah. Whereas some of the questions that are raised in there are yeah. subjective in terms of, does this fit with the town's comprehensive right. plan? How and those are discussions. The town, the town plan for uptown development. Right. Right. Those questions aren't something that you can, that there's necessarily factual evidence to support yeah. no. it or it's more of a, subjective yeah. nature so but it's important for us to have those discussions out there so at least yeah. they know where we are 
but we could insert a comment about the road to Adeline's point, right? We can ask for what is your vision going forward right. for the whole- And particularly that road that you show going to nowhere. Mm -hmm. Typically, most of these applications come in as a overall for the entire parcel with phases mm -hmm. that really yeah. lay it out, right? Because yeah. that way you don't get into segmentation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't get into all these questions. So well, that's that, what's kind of missing here is the linkage back to the overall. Which the analogy from my perspective is the discussion we had at the ordinance committee about doing a three lot development or planning for the future and showing a complete development. Well, we've also had, I don't know if it was economic development or LDC or somewhere, but we've had conversations in the past about how that whole area is needing more industrial land, um, industrial zone land. So I, I have that question about it too. Yeah, yeah. That's you kind know. of a bigger conversation, but. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Not specific to this one property, yeah. but that's, it's kind of feels a little backwards to take some away. So. When you look at the zoning map and there's very little industrially mm -hmm. zoned land and question is what's the probability of getting some industry developing there or mm -hmm. does it go to residential and that's mm -hmm. did we get that easy our water question then answered in the ldc i mean is there not a water issue is that what i heard from this morning or no doesn't appear to be <laughs> well wait 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 let's be careful that's the I, plant so has just, the capacity to yeah. pro produce enough water, okay. but there's still questions about whether or not we can deliver the water to right. that okay. site. Distribution. Okay, yeah. distribution issues. Okay, yeah. got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. That's clear to everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just say it should be continued. It's as clear as where the end of this road goes. <laughs> <laughs> so the next two. 280 and 281 are appointments in your department. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Ryan. Ryan, 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 Ryan Noble. Yes, so thank you. I'm sorry. They are current employees of the town. Um, it's just a realignment of their positions. So we are recommending that Ryan Freeney goes from water maintenance assistant to the MEO light position. And then for Jonathan Noble, who has been currently the MEO light for the past almost year, almost year. supporting the water department, um, be moved into that water, that vacant water maintenance assistant role. They're trading. Yes. Yeah, we're trading and it's, we've done counseling with them to discuss. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, careful okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you want to talk about the first It works well for both of them. It works well for both of them. These are moves you want to make based on their skills and their right. uh, desires. So. It's the right move. I think that's the end. That's it. We will. I will be in the executive session. I'm requesting, as I know, I noted it could be towards the beginning of the agenda of the meeting, uh, depending on timing and availability. So maybe move to the beginning. What's that? Did you say maybe move to the beginning of the movie? Move. Yeah, depending on timing and availability of the parties, okay. it might be it might be moved to the beginning of the meeting. There's probably a better than fifty percent chance that it will be. Okay. Is that after the informational sessions from Real Property and our assessment? Yeah, it would be after that. Nice. So I think we let them go first, do their presentations, and then we can go into executive session. And then we'll come back up with the public hearings. Yeah, and then I'll come back up to the public hearings. Yep. We can discuss it real quick now. Yeah. Okay. So are we adjourned? So moved. Second. Thank you. Bobby Kenny's. Oh. I had a question about before we adjourn that we do need to move into executive session and stop recording if it's okay with you guys a minute. I move that we go into executive session <laughs> for the purposes of the employment history of a particular individual. I'll Jess, second that. Just, How do you? Do you got it? Just 